African swine fever is a remarkable disease. It is a classic hemorrhagic fever caused by a unique virus and is undoubtedly the most important disease limiting pig production in Africa. It has also caused massive losses to swine industries in Europe and the Caribbean. A further unusual and unfortunate feature of African swine fever virus is that all attempts to produce a vaccine against it have failed, which means that farmers in Africa are largely defenseless against the ravages of the disease. Over the next few minutes, the principles of control of African swine fever will be described. The emphasis will be on control of the disease in sub-Saharan Africa, although the principles remain the same wherever it may occur. There are special problems of control in many countries where resources are limited, as well as in countries where the disease is endemic, either in the wild sewered hosts or in domestic pigs. From here on, African swine fever will be referred to by its initials ASF. Pig production in Africa ranges from family pig keeping in villages to highly sophisticated intensive farming. ASF poses the same threat to all pig keepers. The loss of all their animals and the income that they receive from selling pigs. ASF outbreaks frequently result in a total ban on pork sales. Pig abattoirs are closed resulting in unemployment. Butcheries and pork processing factories close. In many African countries, poor people are deprived of the most affordable source of animal protein. Control, and where possible, eradication of ASF, are therefore priorities and should be accomplished as quickly as possible. In Africa, ASF is endemic to most regions and many countries south of the Sahara. Since the mid-1990s, the number of countries in sub-Saharan Africa facing severe problems caused by ASF have expanded dramatically, especially in West Africa. This situation is reflected in the map you are now looking at. Some control efforts have been more successful than others. Successful control of ASF depends upon rapid recognition and diagnosis of the disease, followed by rapid and effective action to contain spread and eliminate the infection in the shortest possible time. An action plan, supported by appropriate legislation, must be in place in every country to counter an outbreak immediately. The most important key to the control of ASF is the owner of the pigs. Throughout the film, the central role of the owner and his or her acceptance that the control measures are applied to the benefit of the pig producer rather than the government will be emphasized. The sooner ASF is suspected, the less likely it is to spread. Pigs that are infected with ASF virus may shed infective amounts of virus for a day or two before they develop signs of disease. In some communities, Pigs that die of disease are eaten, and the meat may be sold. The remains are often disposed of where neighbors' pigs can eat them. Damage is greatly limited when pig owners recognize the signs of ASF and react by reporting the disease and ensuring that it does not leave their farm. Training pig owners to recognize ASF and to react appropriately by restricting pig movements and reporting the disease at once is crucial to the control of ASF. When an outbreak of ASF is suspected, the affected area must be placed under quarantine immediately. The area quarantined depends on the type of farming operation. It may include a single herd, one or more farms or villages, or an entire district. No pigs or pig products may leave the quarantine premises, and the movement of people who have been in contact with the infected premises may be restricted as well. People who must leave the premises must be disinfected. 
the diagnosis must be confirmed by submission of suitable samples to a laboratory competent to diagnose ASF. Samples of spleen and lymph nodes from pigs that have died naturally or have been euthanized in extremis should be submitted on ice to the laboratory with minimum delay. If it's likely to prove impossible to maintain the cold chain, 50% glycerosaline may be added to the samples to ensure that they will arrive at the laboratory in good condition. Blood samples may be collected into vacuum tubes without coagulant, red stoppers, from pigs that are recovering or are reported to have recovered from the disease in order to determine whether antibodies are present. When the diagnosis has been confirmed, stamping out by killing all infected and in-contact pigs should commence. The carcasses must be disposed of in such a way as to ensure that the meat does not become available for consumption by people or pigs, so that deep burial and or burning is recommended. Pigs should be killed humanely, and the owners should be compensated for pig slaughtered, but not for pigs that die naturally of disease. After the stamping out procedure, the premises should be disinfected immediately and left without pigs for a prescribed period of time that will depend upon the time needed to ensure that all the pigs in the area that might pose a risk have been found and slaughtered. If disinfection cannot be carried out immediately, to prevent transmission from the scene of compulsory slaughter, it can be omitted because natural forces such as sun and rain, will rapidly inactivate the virus. When the stamping out has been completed and at the end of the prescribed resting period, sentinel pigs at about 10% of the stocking rate are introduced to ensure that the premises are free of ASF virus. The sentinel pigs must be chosen from clean herds and bled to ensure that they do not have antibodies against ASF. They are allowed to range freely throughout the premises where pigs are kept and are observed carefully for a period of six weeks. If they are all healthy at the end of the period, not having shown any signs of ASF infection, the premises may be restocked with pigs at the normal stocking rate. When ASF infection is declared, there will usually be a ban on the sale of pork. Under particular circumstances, this may be modified to permit controlled slaughter and sale of pigs, that is, sale of pigs from farms that are known to be uninfected, with movement from the farm of origin to a designated abattoir under veterinary supervision, with sale through designated outlets. When it is determined to be safe, that is, when no outbreaks have occurred for a period determined by the veterinary authorities, the ban will be lifted and trade in pork will become legal again. This will usually coincide with the end of the period of sentinelization and permission to restock farms. Conventional control measures fail for a number of reasons. Delayed diagnosis. This may be the result of failure to recognize the signs of disease by farmers or field officers exacerbated by a lack of laboratory facilities. It is addressed by training farmers, local authorities and field staff to recognize the disease. Failure to control movement of pigs and their products. This can result from poor communication, poor motivation on the part of officials, lack of resources, bureaucratic delays and logistical problems such as clogged roads, off-road traffic and porous borders. It is addressed by encouraging voluntary stoppage of movement by informing pig producers, officials and the general public about the dangers of moving pigs and their products during an outbreak. Failure to pay adequate compensation for compulsory slaughter of pigs. This may result in widespread dissemination of the virus through illegal movements to avoid both the disease and the officials carrying out the slaughter process. 
Owners should be offered market-related compensation for pigs slaughtered and should be informed about the danger of failing to comply with the measures instituted. In areas where the sylvatic cycle that involves warthogs and argacid ticks occurs, prevention is easily affected by ensuring that no contact between pigs or warthogs can take place. This is accomplished by the use of pig-proof fencing or solid walls and by ensuring that carcasses of warthogs are not brought into premises where pigs are kept or fed to pigs. ASF is more difficult to control in areas where the disease is endemic in domestic pigs. The same principles apply, that is, pig-proof premises, but it becomes more important to ensure that people and vehicles do not carry the disease into pig farms. Where free-ranging pigs are kept, the most important means of control is to ensure that at least pig remains are not available for other pigs to eat. Farmer education is crucial in preventing ASF in areas where the disease is carried by domestic pigs. Organization of the pig industry and upgrading of pig production are helpful in ensuring that the disease is well controlled. To prevent ASF from entering countries that are free of disease, import regulations must be in place to ensure that pigs and their products are not imported from infected areas or countries. However, it is most important to have an awareness program that ensures that producers and veterinarians can recognize the disease and understand its importance. A contingency plan to deal with ASF must be in place. ASF must be controlled because it causes such high mortality and has the potential for rapid transboundary spread. There are few diseases that cause such severe economic devastation, depriving pig producers at all levels of their livelihood. There are few animal species that can compete with a pig as a contributor to food security and household income. Control of ASF is essential to ensure that the pig continues to play a leading role in alleviating poverty in Africa and that this devastating disease does not threaten pig production throughout the world.